Hey, Remar Nurses, it's Monday, so you know what that means. This is How to Pass in Clex, and my name is Regina Callion. I missed you. I missed you this weekend. I'm coming today to check in on you to make sure that you start your week off amazing and ready to pass this test. So we're going to go over some thyroid gland overview. We've been talking a little bit about fundamentals. I think it's really important. Uh, and then, of course, we have our Monday motivation, which is simply where is the wealth? Where is the wealth? And if you have been following me, you know we are knee deep in the NCLEX 30 day challenge. And so it's not too late to join. It's not too late to join. So if you're serious about taking NCLEX, challenge yourself and just simply sign up for it. You can start at any time. It starts where you are. So head over to remarnurse.com forward slash 30 days. And you guys know this is so important. This is such a special day because we are indeed remembering the dream. And each one of us has a responsibility, has an obligation um, to live out our ancestors' wildest dreams for us. You know, when you think about your life and you think about people who have come before you, the way you are living is their wildest dreams. The education you have, the opportunities you have, the, the, the goals that you can even think about achieving are, it, it would just blow their minds. And so what, what are you going to do with this opportunity? What are you going to do with this privilege that you've been given by being born in this time, right? So I want you guys to be the dream, be the dream. And we can start it off by our first question. It's coming at you right now. It's coming at you fast. Share this video, smash that like button. Uh, and let everybody know, hey, it's Monday and it's time to get down. Here's our first question. The nurse is caring for a client on a med surge unit. Whew. Which client should the nurse assess first? Is it number one? The client who is a heroin addict who has taken morphine and states they cannot remember their name. Two, the client who just returned from a partial thyroidectomy who has not urinated. Three, the client with vital signs, respiration pulse 98, blood pressure 165 over 90, temperature 101. Four, the client who states the male LPN touched her inappropriately. Woo, I am not taking it easy on you guys today. And I am interested in to know who should the nurse see first. Come on in, tap in right now. This is Remar Review. And we are checking in on you on Monday to make sure that you are all in. You said you wanted to be all in. Let's be all in. Got a lot of twos on the screen. Got a lot of ones. Got a lot of threes. Hey, lots of different answers. I'm today. The correct answer here, the correct answer here is going to be, yeah, hey, it is number one, the heroin addict who has taken morphine and they state they cannot remember their name. This client has a neurological change. We need to figure out what's going on with this person. We need to figure out what is going on with this person because when you are confused and you cannot remember things suddenly, it could be an issue with your oxygenation level. And we know that this person has taken an opioid, a narcotic drug, which is morphine, which what does morphine do? It causes constipation, yes, but it also depresses what? Respiration. Yes, so anytime we put somebody for NCLEX, we wanna know how, how is their breathing? And so if a person is confused, why are you confused? Is it because your brain is not getting enough oxygen? And we got to go see that person. OK, we got to go see that person. The other people, definitely the client who has a thyroidectomy, um, they haven't urinated yet. We want to check that patient. We do. Um, but we want to go where oxygenation is an issue or a potential issue. And so the patient with the thyroidectomy, too, even though, yes, um, they just returned from a partial thyroidectomy, they're directing us to the patient has not urinated. That is, the, that is the presentation. And so we're not going to be worried about a circulation problem here when we know somebody could have depressed respirations or oxygenation. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Hold on to this information. Hold on to this information. Um, because 
we're we're going to add on to it today. We're building, we're building, we're building. And so I want us to little a, a little bit focus on the thyroid hormones. I want us to a little bit focus on understanding what the alterations are for next generation NCLEX. You're gonna have to know how to be able to pick out cues. You're gonna have to know what are the abnormals for a patient under certain situations. And so when you think about the thyroid hormone, I want you guys to think about, I want you guys to put what is the responsibility of this hormone in the body? Why do we have it? What is it, uh, what, what is it going to help the body to do? All right, um, and, and, and that's the major focus. The anatomy is always important. The anatomy, understanding anatomy is always important, but you have to understand what are the expected functions of the important parts? Okay, so if we're talking about the thyroid hormone, we know that the thyroid hormone, hey, it's in the neck, right? <laughs> it, it, the thyroid gland is in the neck, but it focuses and it helps the entire body. So if you want to have normal cardiac output, yes. If you want to have muscle production, if you want to have bone formation, if you want to have good oxygen consumption, if you want to have an appropriate functioning metabolic rate, if you are interested in being able to fight or flight, the thyroid it plays a part into all of those things, right? It really affects the totality of human anatomy. And so when a patient has too little or too much, of the thyroid hormone, you are going to see it. You're going to physically see it. You're going to see it in the vital signs. That's right. Tag your best study buddy. Tag your best study buddy and let them know class is in session. Where are you? Okay. Um, and so this, this is why we study thyroid hormone for the NCLEX exam. This is why I go over in the lectures, the thyroid gland. And so if you are responsible uh, for this information, then you should be writing it down. You should be knowing it. You should be memorizing it. All right. Because this is not something that you can uh, think that you will just come into later. It has to be studied. And so what we're talking about is hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. So when you talk about hyperthyroidism, when you talk about hyperthyroidism, you know that this patient has too much too much of the um, of the thyroid hormone, and so there are some certain conditions that will cause a patient to have too much of the thyroid hormone. For ex example, you have your Graves disease, right? It's an autoimmune disorder, right? Also, 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 you're going to have tumors that can cause. We saw where the thyroid gland um, is located and where it functions. You can have tumors that will cause uh, overproduction. All right. Um, and then also some babies that are born to moms with grave disease also carry the condition, also carry the condition. And so if you have your virtual trainer workbook, um, you can add these notes to the endocrine review or endocrine overview, the thyroid gland page. Okay. And you should be filling out your notes as you're watching the video, but I'm going to give you some more information. All right. And this is the practical nurse version. And then also the registered nurse version, it should be here as well. Okay. So there are many reasons why a patient could have this condition. Now, what would we expect to see? What are you going to see? What would your patient look like before I show you thinking your mind what is this patient going to look like? Okay. Okay. So with hyperthyroidism, you're going to have an increase in the, uh, the, the presentation of your normal anatomy. So the patient's going to have high energy, right? They're going to be uh, moving all over the place. Their energy is up. Their metabolism is high because we know that the, the, the thyroid hormone regulates metabolism. Yes, they're going to be skinny. Right. If you have a high metabolism, you're going to burn, burn that fat. Also, the vital signs are going to be increased. Uh, heart rate, blood pressure, uh, again, irritable, the exophthalmus, which you see here, the bulging eyes. Your patient will struggle 
with these things or struggle with maintaining normalcy and they will definitely have an intolerance to heat. Are you guys following me? And you should be asking yourself as we review this information, do you know it? Did you already know this or are you learning today? Are you learning today? Okay. Um, and so when we think about it, fine, we know it. We know it now. We know the signs. We know what it is. How do we treat it? How do you treat this situation? And with hyperthyroidism, um, there's really there's really two ways to treat hyperthyroidism. There is all always, if you think about in the hospital, you have a, 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 a MICU. What does MICU mean? And then you have an SICU. And those are really two ways that I like to categorize treatments of pretty much every condition. So if you think about a patient being in the MICU, they're in the medical intensive care unit. And if you think about a patient being in the SICU, they're in a surgical intensive care unit. So you have medications to treat a condition and then you have surgeries to treat a condition. And so we're going to talk about the medication for for this treatment and absolutely this is um this is radioactive iodine yes so radioactive iodine can be used to treat hyperthyroidism okay and this again uh guys th this is in the vt i'm just giving you a, a high level overview of it so if you have this book go ahead and add these to your notes so um, the, the radioactive iodine, the function of it, it, it's going to destroy the thyroid hormone, essentially. And so it won't be able to overproduce if it's not functioning at all. All right. So that is something that you want to definitely know. That is something that you want to definitely know. The diet for hyperthyroidism, the diet for hyperthyroidism is going to be um, a high calorie high protein diet. And this makes sense because this makes sense because when a patient is irritable, they're, uh, they're uh, overactive, they are not going to want to sit down and have a large meal. Sit down and have a large meal. So you want them to have high calorie um, and then high protein diets. Now, what kind of precautions do you need to use? Because with this condition, this radioactive iodine is not safe for the healthcare providers, all right? You're giving it to the patient, but you have to protect yourself from this substance, all right? So what are the precautions? Well, you need to have on a gown and gloves, okay? You need to have on a gown and gloves. Also, the patient's, the patient's um, bodily fluids are going to be radioactive, radioactive. So um, you have to flush the toilet three times after this patient uses the restroom, okay? Because the fluids can be harmful. We don't want to allow visitors in this patient's room at least the first 24 hours after they have had this treatment, after they have had this treatment. And then no pregnant nurses, no pregnant nurses, and you need to rotate the, um, the nursing assignment. No pregnant nurses, and then you need to rotate the nursing assignment, okay? And so these are things that you wanna make sure Okay, these are things that you want to make sure that you understand about this condition. Okay, all right. So, radioactive iodine is one way. Now, hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism is the opposite. And this is where you have a situation where everything goes down, right? Everything goes down. And so, if you think about the opposite, you're going to have somebody with low energy. You're going to have somebody with low metabolism, right? Um, you're going to have somebody with the, the decreased vital signs, right? Um, hypoglycemia, 
hypoglycemia, this patient will be lethargic and they will also have the goiters. Yes, they will also have a goiters. So if you can study, if you can study content like this by looking at opposite conditions and juxtaposing them together, it's going to help you remember more, right? And then as, as you're writing things down and taking notes, it's helping you really cement this content in your brain. And this is how you study for your NCLEX exam. You don't want to just do a whole bunch of questions. Questions are great, but you really want to make sure you're actually doing a overview of the content, right? It's a difference. It looks different. So let's look at the medical way that we treat hypothyroidism. And the medical way that we treat it is going to be, yeah, we're going to give what is missing. We're going to give what is missing. So if they don't have enough of the thyroid hormone, we have to give a medication that is going to replace the deficiency. And so that medication is um, levothoxine three, and then you can give that for your patient once a day and first thing in the morning <laughs> without anything on their stomach, okay? First thing in the morning without anything on their stomach. And so this is something that they will take, yes, for the rest of their life, for the rest of their life. Absolutely. And when the patients are on this, patients are on this um, medication, you have to watch them because sometimes they can get uh, sent into a hyperthyroid condition. So that's something that you want to watch for when a person begins treatment with this synthetic medication. Okay. Hey, all right. Perfect. Okay. So that was just a little quick overview of what your content reviews should look like. So if you're studying for NCLEX, this is what you should be doing. All right. This is what you should be doing. Now let's get back into the questions because that's what we love and that's what you came here for. And I'm not going easy on you guys today. So here is a really tough question. Just do your best. Here it goes. Okay. All right. The charge nurse must determine which nurse working on the endocrinology unit is most appropriate to send to the newborn nursery. Here we go. Is it the licensed practical nurse with previous experience? Two, the registered nurse with previous experience? Three, the registered nurse who has five children at home? Or four, the licensed practical nurse who is a new graduate on the endocrine unit. Here we go. <laughs> I told you, it's a little tricky, but guess what? Okay, guess what? Here we go. Um, the charge nurse must, must determine which, which nurse working on the endocrinology unit is most appropriate, okay, to send to the newborn nursery. Is it, number one, the licensed practical nurse with previous experience? Two, the registered nurse with previous experience? Three, the registered nurse who has five children at home? Or four, the licensed practical nurse who is a new graduate on the endocrine unit? Okay, I see so many. You guys are, look like you're all on one accord. With this answer, I keep seeing it over and over again. Is it? Is there anybody else that wants to pick anything different? Or are we all, is this all the like number two show? <laughs> all right. Um, so, okay. So actually, let me see. Okay. So actually the correct answer, and remember the scenario where you're, you're looking to see who should go, who should go from your unit, okay, to another unit. So a lot of people pick two, some people pick four. I see some new answers coming in. The right answer is actually going to be number one, okay? Number one, the licensed practical nurse with previous experience. Why is this the case? Because, hey, listen, if I'm a charge nurse and I'm thinking about my unit and, and they're saying somebody else needs help, I do not want to, um, I do not want to handicap my unit to send somebody else help. So if I have an option between a licensed practical nurse 
and a registered nurse, who do I want to send? Who do I want to send away? I want to send the licensed practical nurse because they can help, right? They can help them, but if, if I am, if I'm to make sure my patients are in appropriate condition and I have to get rid of one of my staff members, I want to keep the highest level for my unit. So I'm going to keep my registered nurse because my registered nurse can do assessments. They can pass all medications. They can cover for anybody else that needs to take a lunch or needs to take a break. If I send my registered nurse away and I'm left with an LPN, then I have to get somebody to do all of their assessments. I have to pull somebody else to, you know, maybe pass one of their medications or check something. And so I'm already down a person, right? So I'm not gonna send my registered nurse away. I'm not gonna send the registered nurse away. I really don't wanna send my LPN away, right? And so I want you guys to think about that. Yes, we wanna send the person, um, you know, with the, the, we wanna send the most appropriate person with the, the the lowest amount of responsibilities, right? And so uh, that's why number one is going to be best, all right? That's why number one is going to be best. And so this is one of those questions that you can get on the NCLEX exam and you can pick the wrong answer and it'll drop you below that passing mark because this is a safety issue. This is a safety issue, all right? So I'm glad you guys showed up today. I'm glad you guys showed up today. Here we go, here we go. This is another question here. I really like this one. So we have a nurse is caring for a client with severe hypothyroidism. The client is being transferred to the intensive care unit. Which laboratory result should be addressed immediately by the transfer nurse? Okay, um, is it number one? The client's pH is 7.30, PACO2 is 80, HCO3 or bicarb is 29. Two, the client's blood pressure is 70 over 45. Three, the client requests to have, a, to be a DNR, okay? Or four, the client's blood glucose level is 60. Mm, I told you guys, I'm not taking it easy on you today. If you got this patient, okay, if you got this patient um, and they are, and they, they are coming in as a transfer, what needs to be reconciled? What needs to be reconciled, all right? I see some ones, I see some twos. Hey, guys, listen, I'm giving you one more second because I want a lot of you guys to change your answer. Okay. All right. The correct answer, guys, is going to be number... I hope you guys got this one. Number one. Number one is what is most concerning. Number one is most concerning because this patient has acidosis. So number one is going to be what is correct, okay? Yay, good job, guys. And, and, and you guys can see it really easily. With blood gas interpretation, you have to be able to know that normal 7.35 to 7.45. That is a normal pH. So if you are below 7.35, like our patient here, okay? Our patient here is at 7.30. Okay, so they're in an acidosis state. That pH is way too low, okay? And then if we just look at the bicarb, if we look at the bicarb, that bicarb is what? 29. So, hey, this patient is suffering. They're, 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 they're suffering. And you gotta be able to get in there and you gotta be able to evaluate it very quickly, very, very quickly. And, and this is one of the things that we go over again Hey, 
This is one of the things that we go over again in the comprehensive NCLEX review. Get in it. Get in it. If you are, if you are like, I don't know how to do blood gas interpretations, blood gas interpretations should take you two minutes to do. Two minutes. You should be able to look at them and tell exactly what the patient is suffering from. So it's a matter of content, guys. All right. Perfect. One more question. Let's do one more. Here we go. Okay, let me read it to you. It cut out a little bit here. Based off of this assessment photo, the nurse should, ex should suspect which of the following. Okay, now I want you guys to look at it. We're looking at the patient's what? Mouth. What is irregular? So what should we suspect? And here are the choices. This is diabetes mellitus type two. Number two is Addison's disease. Three is Cushing syndrome. Four is herpes simplex one. Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And remember, this is a fundamentals question. This is fundamentals. <laughs> oh man, this is fundamentals. So if you don't get this one right, if you don't get this one right, then I definitely will point you in the direction that you need to go, okay? I definitely will point you in the direction that you need to go. So based off of this assessment photo, is this condition, number one, diabetes mellitus, two, Addison's disease, three, Cushing syndrome, or four, herpes simplex one, okay? Okay, and I'm gonna look, I want you guys to look at me very carefully into this camera. I'm gonna look at you very carefully and tell you that, that it is not number four. It's not number four. It's not number four. Change the answer. Change your answer, please. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Here we go. So I'm giving you guys a second to change your answer. I don't wanna see any more number fours because that's absolutely what it's not. You are looking at a patient here with an abnormal assessment. And it's blatantly abnormal. It's nothing, it is nothing. Um, there's, <laughs> okay. Okay, I, good. I see some different answers coming in. I'm happy. I'm happy with the answers that I'm seeing coming in. Sometimes I just got it. I see, I know sometimes I have to take it a little bit tougher with you guys. I got to take it to the next level. This is real critical thinking. Think about these conditions. Think about what happens. Are we looking at the lips or are we looking at the gums? Ask yourself that. You, you tell me. Oh, I see somebody that got it. I see somebody that got what I was looking for. Okay. All right. It's not the teeth. It's not the teeth. This is deep thinking. So I'm, I'm going to put the answer on the screen. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is what you guys got to be able to see very quickly, um, especially if you're preparing to take this next generation NCLEX. Okay. This is Addison's disease. This is Addison's disease because there's hyperpigmentation where? What color are those gums? What color are the normal gums? Okay. When you look at, when you look at the normal gums, what color are they? Okay. You can tell this is an abnormal assessment. And so what would cause the gums to be discolored? Okay, what would cause the gums to be discolored? You are going to have, and, and they're, a, they're a darkish color. They're a darkish color. So what would cause that would be Addison's disease, right? Because with Addison's disease, you have that hyperpigmentation. So somebody had put it earlier, you have that bronze colored skin. Yeah, it just doesn't it just doesn't change the color of the skin, but the mucous membranes can also change too as well. So this goes back to just knowing content. This goes back to knowing content. I don't see herpes simplex on here. I don't see herpes, right? I'm particularly looking at the mucous membranes, right? We wouldn't find um there we go. I was looking for that comment. Yeah, we're we're expecting the gums to be pink. We're expecting them to be pink, even if you look at yours right? You're going to see pink mucous membranes. Um, and so, yes, 
I, I'm challenging you guys today. But again, it all goes back to just doing what you can every day to be better. And so I'm happy that you showed up because you saw that I was on and you said, let me stop and let me make my learning a priority. And this is how you pass NCLEX, making uh, the opportunities that present themselves a priority to you. There are many people on here that didn't know that answer, but they're not here to study. So shout out to you guys. All right. Um, also as well, hey, if you want to study more, get the quick facts for NCLEX to go over that content. Yes, 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 yes. You can do it. You can do it. All right. My Monday motivation today is where is the wealth? Where is the wealth? And I'm going to ask you guys this. Put in, the, put in the comments, do you know what season is coming up? I'm hearing a lot more about it, okay? I'm hearing a lot more about it. What season is coming up? We have, uh, we, we have gotten through the holiday season. So what is the next big season that everybody is getting excited for? Everybody's getting excited for. What is it, guys? What, what is it? I want to see the comments on the screen. First person that gets it. What are we all excited for? Ah, Marie says season to pass my NCLEX exam. That's true. That's not the season that I was looking for. Uh, not quite. Not quite. I'm talking about where is the wealth? I'm talking about where is the wealth? Hey, you got it. You got it, Kendra. <laughs> all right. Exactly. Tax season is coming up. Oh, glory. OK, tax season is coming up. So we're talking about where is the wealth. And this is what's interesting to me about tax season. During tax season, people get influxed with a substantial amount of money. Right. It's a substantial amount of money. And there are many things that people want to do with their taxes. Right. With their tax returns. They, they want to pay off debt. All right. Um, they want to you know, pay off their loans, pay off their credit cards. They want to get a new TV. They want to turn the cable back on, turn the Wi-Fi back on, right? They want to go on vacation, right? Um, or they want to put money in their savings. A lot of people do want to save the money, which I think is great. Other people want to uh, purchase a car, get a better home. Um, some people just, they don't, they say, hey, I don't have a tax return. I don't even know what it is. I, I don't even have one. So um, but most people, they, they, they try to save it. They say, I, you know, I really want to save this money. And I wanted to come on here as future nurses and tell you guys, I'm listen, I'm talking from the other side. I'm talking from the other side and I'm trying to tell you this. All right. As a nurse, because that's how I see you guys. I want you to understand this principle. OK, it's very important. Here it is. Wealth is not the money in your hand. It's not the money that you have in your hand. It is the knowledge that you have in your mind, okay? Your wealth is not the $300, $400, $500 that you will get during tax season. Some people may get more. I, I would even go so far to say it's not the $2,000 that you have in your hand, all right? That's not wealth because when you, if you put it in the money, I mean, if you put it in the bank, or if you give it to somebody else, it's essentially nothing is done with it, okay? We know that money in the bank just sits there. It's not really growing. They're not giving you high interest rates. It's just there. If you use the money to pay off a student loan, if you use the money to buy a new car, that's gone. That's not wealth. Wealth is having a reoccurring stream of income. And that's why I say to you as a nurse, your wealth is here, okay? So when you're thinking about, hey, I'm about to get a whole bunch of money or even a couple more dollars, learn to invest it in yourself. Learn to invest it in the thing that will keep you wealthy, which is your knowledge. Get your nursing license, literally. Get your nursing license, buy a book. I tell this story all the time. I bought a book and it was $100. I bought a hundred dollar book, y'all, right? And some people would think, I'm never spending that much money on a book. But let me tell you, there are some books that you can spend a hundred dollars on 
And that book, when you have that knowledge, will literally make you a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, right? And so I want you guys as nurses to understand that you are your most valuable asset. There is nothing that is going to improve your life more than that nursing knowledge in your brain. That's it, right? That's your career. So right now, on this day, make a commitment that you're going to invest in yourself. If you get a tax return, invest it into yourself, invest it into your growth, invest it into your health, invest it into your knowledge, because that's where the real wealth is. That's where the real wealth is. And people don't learn that until too late in life. People don't learn that until too late in life. And so I want you guys to have the career of your dreams. I want you to see yourself opening up that nursing license, right? You get a little letter in the mail and it's your nursing license. Imagine yourself opening up that license. Imagine yourself applying to that registered nursing job that you want in the NICU, in surgery, whatever you want to do, in telehealth, wherever, uh, because that is where your wealth will be. That's where your wealth will be, where you're using your skills. Now, there's nothing wrong with working at Walmart. There's nothing wrong with working as a nurse's aide or at Target or wherever, but you have the training of a healthcare professional. You have the knowledge. You come on here and you answer these questions. You know how many people could answer these questions? Not many. And you guys got the tough ones today. Right. And so I want you to understand there's value in what you are hiding from everybody else. And I say you're hiding it right now because you have not set yourself up to be examined. Right. You have not been examined yet. And so when you take that NCLEX, it's your opportunity to prove to society that you are capable in your role as a nurse. So. Um, I want you to be excited about your wealth, all right? Because you control it. Nobody else controls it. You control it. One of my friends today, uh, not, not today, last night, she said, girl, I saw nurses are making um, $125 an hour. I need, to change my, um, I need to change my profession. And I said, yeah, it's out there. Yeah, I said, I said yeah, it's out there. <laughs> um, and, and so it's, it's the truth, your family. Everybody is waiting for you um, to do this thing. How many people, how many people are waiting for you? Or just let me know really quickly, when you get your nursing license, who are you going to bless? And um, I'll say this today too. If you find yourself needing to get back into the virtual trainer, uh, because it is Martin Luther King Day and you want to get back into the trainer, um, then we will do something special for you. So if you just go ahead and email support at remarreview.com or if you go to actually just go to remarnurse.com you will see a special discount for the virtual trainer okay i love that i love that so um kelly says i'm going to bless my hubby and our son i love that yes my mom my family when you get your nursing license who are you going to bless who are you going to bless and as i'm speaking to you um I just resonate. And that's why I love the community of Remar because uh, I saw somebody say, bless my son. And let me tell you, this is my boy here. This is my boy. Hi. And <laughs> and my nursing license has blessed this young man so much. And he doesn't even know it. And that's the thing about our children. It's just like, he doesn't even know what a blessing. Can you say good morning? Say good afternoon to the Remar nurses. Good morning, Remar nurses. Uh-huh, right? And so... um you know, are there so many people that are depending on us and that are counting on us to do this thing, to do this thing. And they're watching. They're constantly watching us. Right. Um, when, even when I'm talking to you, my children are constantly watching and seeing what I'm doing as you are studying. Uh, your children are constantly watching. So to the point that uh, as I was out, I, I said I was in Orlando and I was just going to grab some food and I walked by a family and the child of a mother said, mommy, there's that nurse. The child recognized me because the mother has been studying with Remar. And so that is how closely, that is how closely our children 
are, are watching us. Our husbands are watching us. Our parents are watching us and they're depending on us. So um, again, if you are ready, if you are ready to be a blessing and you want to get into the VT, you want to renew it, uh, we're doing a special discount for our renewals on Martin Luther King Day. And so if you go to remarnurse.com, you will see that. You will see that, guys. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a blessing. It, it, it really is. It's a blessing to be here with you guys. And also, hey, get into it. Get into it. 30-day uh, NCLEX challenge is happening right now. So as well, we are doing that. We have a lot. We have a lot planned for you guys in 2022. So much. So much to be grateful for. And there's so much because there is a work that needs to be done. Nur we, we need nurses. I can't get, there's 340 of you watching right now. We need you guys to get licensed and get into the field yesterday. We need a job yesterday. And so whatever I can do to help you get there, I want to make happen, okay? I want to make happen. So um, remember, this is, a, this is a significant day. Martin Luther King, he works, Martin Luther King Jr., he worked so hard uh, to create a platform for us to be able to be equally recognized, for every color to be celebrated, and for um, African Americans to be able to progress to the heights of their imagination in this country. And um, I'm definitely, definitely a reflection um, that that dream is an actualization now, and so are you. So I'm happy to say this to you guys. I say it all the time. You guys know it. Uh, I can, I will, and I must pass NCLEX. Yes!